if I, if I remember my training in astronomy, um, you know, 50 years ago, we were teaching uh, in astronomy classes at Northwestern University, for example, that it was very likely that any slowly rotating yellow star, like the sun, the sun is a slowly rotating yellow star that's very stable, is likely to have planets, just like we have planets. And that it's very likely that some of those planets would be in, in a range that is somewhat similar to the solar system. In other words, there would be something like air that could be breathed by you know, a biological you know, uh, being, a biological creature. And there would be something like water. Okay? So water can only exist in a certain range away from the sun. Okay? That would be true for, you know, throughout the universe. So if then you, you, you get to a very, very large number of potential planets within the life zone of the, that solar system or that star system. And this is just within our galaxy. And we know, you know, there are billions of galaxies. So the probability that some of those would have developed life somewhat similar to us, you know, is, is high. Okay. okay. Uh, so that, that's the reasoning that leads you to that. Now the question is, would they be able to travel in space all the way to the Earth? Now I've done some statistics, you know, about that other people have done it. I've, I've published those statistics a long time ago. There is a, a zone, uh, some maybe uh, you know, less than 100 light years or 200 light years from the Earth, where you would expect if there were ETs coming here, they, they would probably come from that zone if you assume that they have to travel from there to here. That's a big if, because what if they don't have to travel? W what if they can do it like this? And how is physics? Well, um, when I talk to physicists today, they say that there, there, are, there is a possibility of other dimensions, and then you could, you could punch a hole, you know, in Alpha Centauri, and you could emerge through a hole, you know, between the Earth and the Moon, w instantly. And you would not have to cross the distance. So you would not have to spend years or centuries, you know, on a spacecraft at some fraction of the speed of light to, to, to get here, that you could get here instantly. But there are other possibilities, you know. Dr. Hynek used to say, what if there is another universe five minutes ahead of us? It would take five minutes to get here. And for humans, not possible, right? Well, for uh, an advanced civilization mm -hmm. that has understood the structure of the universe, you know, uh, there, could, there could very well be another universe five minutes ahead of us. We would never see them. So uh, all those possibilities are there, you know. And again, um, there is a, um, uh, there are legends about that and there are, of course, uh, you know, religious traditions about that. Yeah. Maybe I'll ask you a quick question here related to what you mentioned. I think Donald Hoffman talked about that, why is it we see the reality it is, and I believe that we don't see the reality as it is. I mean, as a human, we limit it. I think you agree with that. But do you think if this is really true, do you think this is, would define the God and religion and all that maybe not true? I'm not sure what you think if we really have other civilization, other creature, do you think that's the religion, whatever the religion is, or our beliefs, or the God is not real? I'm sorry if that's an offending question, but I'm, I won't ask you. I, I think there would be um, a revolution is certainly in, in religious scholarship, 
we first we would want to know if we can communicate with them. We would want to know what is their concept of the universe, of how it was created. You know, in, in physics, we have a, a particular theory or a number of theories about how the universe started. Um, then the Bible says, let there be light, you know, that light was the first thing, which is also what physics is saying now, that it started with a big explosion of energy. Okay? And then there was an acceleration, there was the expansion of the primitive universe, and then there was the growth of the universe to the modern state of the stars and the galaxies. Okay? Well, um, this would not necessarily be a, a crisis. It would be a, an extraordinary opportunity for rethinking who we are, where we come from, and so on. But I think the, the other impact comes from physics, not from UFOs, but from you know, all uh, you know, uh, academic physics that today says that we have to think beyond space and time, that space and time are secondary aspects of the universe, that th th and they are just the way we tend to make sense of the universe, but that all of this isn't space and time, that all of this is sort of a quantum reality that we perceive as space and time. So if that's the case, and there are a number of theories, of course, that develop from that that are uh, absolutely fascinating. Uh, and, you know, I, I, my, the physics I learned is a long time ago, so I'm, I'm trying to relearn it with that kind of theory, uh, you know, and, and educate myself about this, but this opens up all kinds of possibilities. So within that... The question is, uh, are there more developed forms of consciousness than we are? Well, you know, I certainly hope so. I think, I think nature is, didn't stop with us, okay? Nature in, in those other, you know, realities would have, would have had millions of years to continue developing. Uh, you would expect that some of them would have developed way beyond what we have had time to to develop, you know, as 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 humans, so their concept might would probably be, you know, much more developed than than ours, and uh, you know, I, I I think it would not necessarily be a uh, a source of conflict. I think it could be maybe a, a source of humility, which is something we need. Yeah, yeah.